All right. Oh man, well, seriously, y'all, I just want to say thank you so much for coming out today. I know there's some people here that um, normally don't come to this church or don't even go to church at all, but they came to hear me, and uh, I cannot thank y'all enough. I see so many friends and family um, here that uh, have come to listen to me, um, but I don't want this to be about me. I don't want this to be, oh, Drew's back in town from California, and he's going to preach the word. No, no, no. It's about the Holy Spirit. I, I'm, just a, I'm just a guy. I'm just a regular guy. I might have some cool red pants on, but I'm just a guy. So if you came to just hear me alone, then it's going to be a sad day, because I, I can't help you. I can't help you, but I know somebody who can, and that's the person that changed my life. And his name is Jesus Christ. And you know what? That's what it's really about today. That's what we are all about, is showing the love and the light of Jesus Christ. So let's give him a hand, please. Can we give a hand for Jesus? Um, and before I begin, I just want to also recognize two people. If my parents stand out, stand up, please. Please stand up. Please stand up. Please, Dad, get up. Seriously, I wouldn't be here today. It wasn't for you guys. I love you both so much. Thank you for teaching me what unconditional love was. And uh, you, ne you always have my back. You know, there are people that turned their back on me, but you guys never did. I wouldn't be here without you guys. I love you guys so much. So anyways, listen, I'm going to pray. So uh, let's just bow our heads. Whew. Holy Spirit, I just welcome you in this place right now. Jesus, I want to thank you so much for uh, your love, God. God, I want to thank you so much for every single person in this place today. Lord, I believe there's some people that know you. I believe there's some people that don't know you. And I believe there's some people that want to get to know you, Holy Spirit, but they just don't know how. Father, I know there's hurting people in this place today, Lord God, that have been through trials and have been through stress and have been through so much fear and depression that they can't even lift their heads above the water. But God, I believe today that you are reaching down with love and with grace and you are looking every single person in the eye and saying, son, I see you. Daughter, I see you. Father, I pray today that your spirit would move in such an unbelievable to the place that there would be a shaking in this place. That these people, they would go home changed, God. They would go home looking at their life, looking at their situation, but most importantly, looking at you differently, Father. So I pray, Lord God, that you would just touch them in an unbelievable way. Thank you so much that they're here. I love them all. And I can't wait to get to meet some new faces. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I'm going to set uh, my time right now because I like to talk, and I know y'all got stuff to do today, so we're not going to be here for three hours. So just so we know, it's 11.25, no discrepancies, okay? So um, just so we got that going, all right, uh, I might take the jacket off, I'm a little hot, but yeah, you know, we're going to take it off, hold on a second. Can I get this up? I mean, you got to be comfortable, please, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Can we, does this thing move? I don't know. All right, we'll try. Is, oh, wait. There we go. Oh, too old. All right. Okay. So here's the deal, guys. I came to church here, um, I don't know, right when, it, right when it first started. I was home from California. And I looked at the paintings on the walls, and I'm like, this is crazy. I mean, seriously, like, look around. We got guys smoking hookah over there. We got Egyptians. Camels, this does not look like an air church that I've ever been in. But that's the point. It's not about what the building looks like. It's about what the people look like. It's about coming together. And another that's cool thing is um, I'm so honored to be here from letting Dallas let me speak today. Dallas is a, a mentor of mine. He's a brother of mine. He's one of my best friends. Um, so Dallas started this church. And so I've been a part of this thing from the beginning. We, we've been praying about this place for years. Years and years and years, and, and now we're seeing the fruit of some of those prayers. And I know that some of you all have been praying about that, too. So this is a fruit of, of what prayer does, bringing hurting people together. But anyway, so today I'm going to talk about the children of Israel and when they were in Egypt. And isn't it ironic that we are in a place, I feel like we're in Egypt right now with these camels on the wall. So if you can't, you know, see it where you're sitting properly or you're listening you know, watching YouTube through YouTube or you're listening to the podcast, 
I'm just giving you the picture. If you can't see this, there are camels, there are little Persian towers, and there's watering dwells and people walking around, and I feel like I'm in another country. So just so you know, just so you're getting in, you know, in the same mindset as me, um, that's what we're that's what we're going after today. So okay, I this is all in the, this is all in the Bible. This is you know at the end of Exodus, and we're going to be in Numbers today. We're going to look at a little bit of the Old Testament. A lot of times. Christians today, we don't use the Old Testament. We got, you know, the teachings of Paul, and we just kind of put the Old Testament on the back burner. But I want to tell you all, you, you can't neglect the Old Testament because the Old Testament was our history. It was our history. And if you don't know your history, you don't know where you're going. If you don't know where you came from in life, you don't know where you're going to go. And so my fear today is that you would be sitting in these seats. I want to say pews, but they're seats. And you wouldn't know where your history, you wouldn't know your history. So we as a people, we got to learn about our history a little bit today. Um, so what happened is you have, you have God's chosen people were the Israelites. And the Israelites were under oppression in Egypt. There's a movie just came out called Exodus. Basically, um, that's kind of the, the, the picture of what we're trying to talk about today is these people were in bondage under the Egyptians for 400 years. 400 years. Nobody in this place has ever lived 400 years old. I mean, that's an old, old, long, long time. But these people, every single day, they would get up and they would go to work, and if they didn't get work right, they would get beat. They'd come home late, they'd come home tired, and they'd get up and do it again. Does anybody relate to that? Does anybody else? Now you gotta talk a little bit. Everybody's so quiet. Please, can we laugh? Can we joke? Please, I know y'all love Ohio State and they want everyone's going crazy at the game. Can we get a little bit of a joy, a little bit of juice flowing today? I'm from California. I'm from here, but I've, I've migrated to California. And, and out there, I, I got a little flow and I, I got to go and I got to move and I got to talk fast. So you might, you might as well pick it up. Please, people, please. You got to give me a little energy. I just, I feel like I'm talking to this camel on the wall. He's not saying anything back to me. I need some laughter, I need some energy, I need some flow. Thank you. I feel you out there. So anyways, 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 so here's the deal, here's the deal. So these people are in, on Egypt and they are getting beat to a pulp. And they hate life and they keep hearing about this God that's so great and so awesome, but they haven't seen anything. I feel like there's some people in this room today that have been crying out to God, but they haven't seen a thing. They see God moving in other people's lives, but they haven't, he hasn't moved in their own life. And they become cynical because they went to church 10 years ago and it was boring. They heard a pastor 10 years ago and he was boring. They met a boring God. Well, I'm telling you right now that God is not boring. Church should not be boring. I apologize if you've been to a church that's boring. Because the God that I know is not boring. That guy is amazing. And that guy is full of grace. And that guy is full of love. And that guy is full of truth. And that guy wants a personal relationship with every single one of you guys today. And see, this is what's so beautiful why we can talk about the children of Israel. Because there was two million people. Today, I don't know, we have about five, six hundred people. So sometimes people say, well, the Bible is boring. I don't really relate to it. But here's what I'm going to tell you about. There, if there's two million people, I guarantee every person in the crowd, I don't know if you're six or you're 106, you can relate to one person in two million. So, so, so don't think today, I can't learn anything from this whippersnapper in these red pants. I can't hear anything from him. No, no, I'm telling you, you can because we are about to enter into the lives of two million people. We can identify with one of them. We can identify with being heartbroken. We can identify with having somebody step on us, with being rejected. We can identify with that. And that's what happened. These people were, were in Egypt and they needed God to move. And sometimes in our lives, we just need God to move and we stop asking for God to move. We pray and we cry out and then he doesn't do anything or we get mad because so-and-so married somebody else or so-and-so took the job that we were supposed to have or my brother got what I wanted and I just gave up on life. Whatever your situation is, you gave up on God. But I'm telling you what, those people, 
the children of Israel, they never gave up on God. They kept crying out. They kept crying out. And you know what? The Lord delivered them. He pulled them with his righteous right hand out of Egypt. And I'm telling you today, he will do that in your life. Whatever you're going through, do not stop crying out. We stop. We stop all the time. And, and when we fall short, we don't hear. We don't hear because we stop. We stop. So today, if there's anger, if there's bitterness in your life, I'm saying reach out for the Lord. Reach out and don't stop. That's what these people did. And they kept crying out. You know what, God? God sent a deliverer. God sent Moses. Moses took these people out of Israel and he led them across the desert. He led them. And I wish I had more time to go into it. But the way he led them out was unbelievable. And the Egyptian people, the people that were holding them captives, the Egyptians are going to represent the problems, the things holding us down in life, the debt, the heartache, the, 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 the pain. Those are what the Egyptians are like in our life today. So, so when you look at this Bible, don't look at it as some antiquated book. Don't look at it as some, I got to read it cover to cover. I feel guilty. I better read three chapters today. No, no, no. You get in it and you get what you need out of it. I was talking to a, a beautiful person the other day. We were talking about cookbooks. And you know what? I want you to view the Bible as a cookbook. Think about it. Don't, I'm not being blasphemous or anything, but what do we use a cookbook for? To make amazing meals and then we enjoy those amazing meals, right? Some of you have been eating peanut butter and jelly every freaking day for the, your whole life. This, the Bible has amazing things in here. And, and you know what? He, God wants to teach you. God wants to speak to you through this Bible. I'll get my pen. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. Thank you. Um, so if we would use the Bible as a cookbook and get in it and actually see what God wants to speak to us, don't, don't, read a, don't read 50 chapters a day. If you do that, that's amazing. But I can't read 50 chapters a day, so don't feel guilty if you can. Read a little bit. Find a story and, and identify with those people. If you don't identify with that person, find somebody else. Because there's people in here, like I said, we're talking about 2 million people coming from Egypt on their journey. You can identify with one of those people. So, so here's the thing. So, so they're traveling... They're traveling through that desert. They are going. And here's what's crazy. Did you know from Egypt to the promised land where they were headed, God said, I have a land for you. Uh, today we can take that as God has great things for us. God has a place for us. Um, so we can't just keep it in the Bible. We got to bring the Bible to us. We got to bring the Bible to us. So, so the Egyptian people uh, are persecuting the Israelites. Israelites cry out to God. God says, I have a place for you. Trust me, I will lead you out. God works amazing miracles. He opened the Red Sea. All this crazy, unbelievable stuff has happened. Now, I would like to venture to guess that there's a lot of people in this room. I guarantee that there are some amazing things that happened in your life years ago, but you forgot about them. But I'm telling you today, I want you to reach back. Reach back. What did God do for you a while ago? What did he do? Do not forget. Because what happens is we forget what God did for us. We forget what he did. And if we forget, then, then, we're, then we're clueless moving forward. But if, we, if I said, if you remember your history, you will remember where you're going forward. So these people, they saw God open the Red Sea. They're all full of faith. They're all excited. They're all energetic. They're all enthusiastic. They're marching. Moses is leading the people, and they're going towards the promised land. And here's the thing. You know, it was supposed to take 11 days. 11 days. That's all. 11 days. That's how, how far that journey was. It wasn't very far. Scholars go back and forth, but the, the majority of them say it was supposed to be an 11-day journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. But here's what happened. They got in the desert, and they're walking. And guess what? They started complaining. They started getting tired. They started not liking their situation. God was giving them amazing food from heaven. Every day they went out and there was food on the ground waiting for them. Just waiting for them. All they had to do was get a little bit, put it in the oven, and they're good. They didn't have ovens, but you know what I'm saying. So anyways, but it was there for them. It was there for them every single day. But they started to complain. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, God will do things for you. And at first, we're really grateful for them. And then it just gets old. It just gets old. We don't, we don't like it. We don't get sick of it. We get sick of it. But here's the problem. What God will give you one season isn't supposed to sustain you for the rest of your life. So, so sometimes we have situations, we have things that happen to us, 
And, and it's just for a season. It's for a season. But we act like it's going to be our whole lives. When God's saying, no, my child, I've given you this heartache. I've given you this, this pain. And, and, and sometimes God didn't always originate the pain. Sometimes God gets blamed for stuff that's from other people or from the devil. Now, God may have allowed some pain, but God is not the originator of pain. See, that's the thing. We've got to get that in our mindset. We don't know who we are. We're, we're, we're going after a God that, that we don't think we know. We're like that wild animal. You know, have you ever been at a zoo and you want to go pet the zebra? And the zebra's going crazy and running around because we don't want to get near it. We, we want to pet it, but they don't want to get near us. And, and sometimes I feel like that's how we are with God. God, you're up there. You created the heavens. You created the earth. But just give me my rent check and, and we're good. We're good. Just give me that wife, God, and we're good. I, I don't want to I, I don't be that close to you, God, because I don't want to get zapped. What I'm telling you, God, God has his arms wide open and he loves you so much. He's looking into your eyes and saying, I just want to be with you. I just want to sit with you. I just want to hold you. But see, the thing is, we don't know our history. The children of Israel forgot their history. They were so used to being beat up by a slave owner, they forgot that they were the promised people of God. See, today we come into church, we get so beat up by our problems, by our situations that we don't know that there's a God that's actually on our side and there's a God that's for us. He's for us. So what happens is we get to the promised land. Now listen to this. This is crucial. This is where I'm going to go to my text. Uh, Numbers uh, chapter 14. I don't apologize. Numbers 13. So we'll get to a place. We'll, we'll come to a, something like today where you have somebody that's, that's giving you the truth, giving you in love, and telling you how amazing you are in Christ. And we forget about it. Why? Because we look at these people around us. So let's go to our text right now. Numbers 13, and where do I want to start at? Okay, okay, here we go. So what's going on is they've been traveling. It should be an 11-day journey. They make it to the, to the beginning of the promised land, the place where God had for these people. And they get there, and God says, verse 1, 13, 1, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel, from each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. So basically, God tells Moses, hey, I'll give you the promised land. Send 12 guys. Go look at it. Go get it. That's all he said. Well, if you read on, Moses starts making up all these rules. So then in verse, you know, 17, 13, 17, it says, Then Moses sent them to spy the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the mountains. And see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell there are strong or weak or few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, whether there are forests or not. He's saying all of this stuff. Go look at your situation. Go in. Let's see what's going on there. Is it good? Is it bad? God has been listening to you cry out your people for four Hundred years, and he's saying, I got an amazing place for you guys. You get to that place, and then you stand on the outside saying, Can, can we can we go in? Is it is it good in there? Is it good in there? You see what happens is we get so comfortable with our situations and our surroundings, we don't want to go any further. We're used to chaos, because chaos is normal. Mama was dysfunctional, I'm dysfunctional. My kids are dysfunctional. That's the way it's always going to be. Granddad, he loved to hit the bottle. He loved to do the drugs. I, I didn't grow up with a dad. This is just the way I am. How many times have you heard people say, well, this is just the way that I am. I've had this addiction to pornography for 30 years. It's just the way that I am. Whatever your situation is, I, I've been like this as a boss for 25 years. It's just the way that I am. Why? You don't know your history. And I speak that in so much love and so much grace because I'm telling you who you guys are. If you only knew, if you could only see what I see, but more importantly, if you could only see what God sees, that he looks at each 
and every single person in this room, and he says, I see a champion in you. I don't care if you lost 59 times. You get up one more time. There is a verse in Proverbs that says, a righteous man falls down seven times, but gets back up one more time. Gets back up one more time. But we get like Moses and these other spies that go into land. And Moses is giving all these directions. Find out this. Find out this. Find out this. So let's let's see what these let's see what happens next. Let's see what's happens next. And the reason why I think y'all are quiet because you're so engaged. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you guys a pass. I thought I'd get a little more life, but that's okay. We're gonna just say you're so engaged and you're so engrossed, and you're like, what's gonna come out of this crazy man's mouth next? So I, I, I'll, I'll give you a pass. I'll give you a pass today. Let me take a sip of water. Hold on. Okay. All right. So here's the thing. Boom, boom. All right, so I'm just gonna read. So I'm gonna read slow. So you got you got to pick it up. Now remember, this isn't this is long, long time ago. This isn't North America. You know, this isn't. They're not going down to Walmart and Walgreens and Target. I mean, this is a whole nother place. So so you got to get in their minds. You got to get in their minds. Okay. So don't just pass this off as some fairy tale. Get in their minds. Here we go. All right. Uh, boom boom boom. So they went up. This is verse 21, Numbers 13:21. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob, near the entrance of Hamath. They went through the south, and then they're going through all these places. I don't need to say the names. Um, and it says the descendants of Anak were there. That's important. We'll come back to that. Um, they came to the valley of Eshel, and there cut down, uh, listen to this, there cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. Do you hear me? One cluster of grapes. Two men had to carry one cluster of grapes. And you guys are sitting here saying, that's impossible, that's crazy. Well, have you ever seen a huge giant pumpkin at Halloween, Thanksgiving time? Some of those pumpkins are so big, you've seen them. Why couldn't there be a grape that size? I mean, it, like this stuff existed back then. There's a grape that was so big it took two men to carry it. Now me, I can hold like 15 clusters of grapes. But back then, one, two people had to carry one cluster of grape. Okay? So just, just, just remember that. Remember that. Okay. They brought some pomegranates and some figs. And the place was called the Valley of Eshels because the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. And then they returned spying out the land after 40 days. And they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of Israel. So they came back. All right. So you're with me. Listen to this. They brought back to them and all the congregation showed them the fruit. All the spies come back. All two million people all excited. And this is what they've been waiting for. These people come back. They're holding these huge grapes. Some excitement begins to build. Look at those grapes. Those are huge. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Verse 27, then they told him, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. Essentially meaning it was amazing. It was abundance, flowing. It's, it's just unbelievable. It's there for us. It's waiting for us. Okay. Uh, verse, where are we at? Okay. Verse 28. Um, nevertheless, nevertheless. See, they saw the greatness and then they, then they stopped short. Oh, it's amazing. There's grapes. It, the land's beautiful. It's unbelievable. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Anak was a huge giant. So there, there's this, these giant people are living in this land. <laughs> the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Am Amorites. And the Canaanites. So again, those, those names don't mean anything to you guys. But, but again, bring it to yourself. Bring it to yourself. What is a giant in your life? Is it finances? Is it lust? Is it pride? Is it greed? Don't let, oh yeah, the Jebusites and the Amorites and the Hittites and the Mosquito Bites and everything else. Don't, don't just, don't slough it up. That's what I'm saying. Make the Bible, make the Bible come alive. Bring it to you. Bring it home to you. Who, who, who these people are. Back in the day, they went in that land and they, they saw these huge cities. They saw all of these giants coming at them. Don't just read that as, as a Bible story. Put that for your own life. What giants are facing you today? So they start talking and all the two million people start freaking out. 
they get so scared. Now, here we go. Listen to this. This is 30. Finally, one guy, one guy uh, shouts out. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We're not able to go against the people. They are stronger than we. And they gave us, here we go, and they gave, verse 32, and they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are great men of stature. Verse 33, probably one of the saddest verses in the Bible. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Anak, and we were like grasshoppers in our sight, and so we were in their sight. Folks, that is the saddest verse in the Bible. God gave these people this amazing land. He gave them grapes that were so big, he gave them valleys and mountains and rivers and streams. They were in Egypt getting beat by slaves. Slave owners would pound them. And they went to this promised land. They got to the edge of it. They got to the edge of it. And they stopped short. They stopped short. God had all of these things for these people. They stopped short. And I could keep reading more. But they go on to say, take us back to Egypt. Why did God take us out here to die? We want to go back to Egypt. We want to go back to Egypt? Really? Do you remember what you went through there? Do you remember getting up every single morning, someone knocking at your door, yelling in your face, spitting on you, demising you, discouraging you, to tell you to make another monument to Pharaoh? You want to go back to that? Because you're afraid of the giant in your life. Now that's those people. But you all today have giants in your life. And you have a choice. You, you, can, you, can, you can go back to Egypt if you want. You can, you can keep being the nail and getting hit by the hammer. You can, that's your choice. You can keep having a bad attitude and holding on to your pride and your bitterness and your, your rage. And, you know, well, they, they wronged me. It's their fault. They wronged me. Uh, they wronged me and you're going to hold your misery and you're going to hold your pain and you're going to hold your guilt and you're going to push everyone away who loves you. If that's what you want to do, you can go back to Egypt. That's fine. That's, that's your choice. But Caleb stood in front of those people and he said, you know what? Let's go take that land. Here's the thing about Caleb. Do you know what his name means? His name means dog. His name means dog, really. Hey, dog. Not, what's up, dog? Like, it was a derogatory term. Like, oh, that's just the dog. That's the dog. These other guys, I went with them. I could go through them. It's in Numbers 13, Shemua, and all these different names. And, and they mean stuff like, God is amazing. God is for me. All these amazing names. And dog is the only person that says, we can take those people down. Because those giants, they're little giants. They're little giants. We can take those people down. And if you read the next verse, he, uh, in verse 14, um, basically, oh, wait, wait, oh, here we go, here we go. This is amazing. Listen to this verse. This is 14, verse 8. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and gave it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fill the people of the land, for they are our bread. They are our bread. The giants are bread. And it's, it's, that's the point. How do you guys view the giants? You want to be like the world? You want to be like the crowd? And, and just view our country or our society or our culture as hell in a handbasket. There are, those kids are going to hell in a handbasket. The MTV is ruining our generation. Well, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Are you going to be like two million people waiting on the edge of the promised land and not go in there? And th thank you. That's it. We got one. We got one man saying no. What? That's Caleb right there. Caleb's the only guy that wants to go in there. But see, that's what I'm talking about. You people just just have a choice every single day. You have a choice. Proverbs says there's life and there's death and the power of the tongue. And whoever finds it will eat of it. You want to be like the, the other spies, the giants? They're giant. 
They're giant. We're like grasshoppers. We're grasshoppers. Or are you going to be like Caleb that says, no, 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 no. Those are my bread. That's what I feast on you. I see these problems. I see, I see these financial woes. I see this stuff going on. And you know what? It excites me because it's not the size of the giant. It's the size of God. Because I know God loves me. I know God loves me. And you, you know what, people? Caleb, you know one of the reasons why he was so excited? Because he went in the land and he saw. He saw the greats. He saw them himself. He saw these mountains and these rivers, and he remembered what it was to be like to be a slave. He remembered what it felt like to get stepped on every single day. Some of you people know what that feels like. Some of you people know what that feels like. But Caleb saw the grapes, and he said, I want it for me. I don't know about all you other people, but I want it. And Joshua joined in, and Caleb and Joshua were the only people that cried out for it and said, we want to go in the land. We want to go in the land. I feel like I'm one of those people. I feel like I've seen that promised land. I feel like I've seen some of those graves. I wish I had more time. And I would love to just tell you guys some of the stories, some of the provision of what I have seen God do in my life. Prayers being answered left and right. But I also know what it feels like to be in the desert. I know what it feels like to walk. And to get beat up by the Egyptians and you keep moving and you keep moving and everyone leaves you and you just walk and you walk and you say, is God really there? Is God really with me? But you know what? By his grace, there's been times I wanted to just walk away. But by his grace, I held on. I felt like I was drowning in shallow waters. I felt like I was so close, but I couldn't make it to the shore. But God reached down with his mighty, righteous right hand of love and grace and pulled me out of it. You see, God had to re change my thinking. I used to think God was that mean guy. That he was going to throw the lightning bolts down. And I had to pray, recite a prayer and get in and get out. I had to go through all my little steps to get to him and run out. I didn't know that, that God wanted to hold me and God wanted to love me. And, and, and that's the problem. We're like that wounded animal that runs around when someone's trying to reach out to us. We don't know that God just loves us and God just wants to be with us. And at the end of the day, when you guys go home, you have a choice, every single one of you. Because that's a beautiful thing. We are families. We are a church. We are Americans or whatever your ethnicity or nationality is. But we each have a choice. What will you do when you see the giants? You have a choice. You're a grasshopper or you're a giant killer. It's your choice. It's your choice. You have got to choose every single day when those, when those bills are stacking up, when your boyfriend breaks up to you and you are just so heartbroken and you want to take your own life because your family is so dysfunctional. You don't think you can make it. You have a choice. Am I going to be a giant killer? Or am I going to be a grasshopper? That's it. Because here's the thing. I'm wrapping up, folks. Caleb. Caleb made his choice. Caleb made his choice. But so did the rest of those people. And I hate to say this, but those people didn't go in. Those people never made it in the promised land. They got beat up by their problems and their situations in Egypt. They went to the desert. They got on the edge of the promised land. And it was too, it was too big for them. And they said, no. I, 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 I'm a grasshopper. God, God brought me out here to kill me. And you know what they did? They ended up staying in that desert for 40 years. 40 years. 11 mile journey. Oh, no, sorry. 11 day journey turned into a 40 year journey. Guys, 2014's over. Don't know what happened. Don't know who wronged you. Don't know who hated on you. Don't know who took a giant hammer and beat you on the head and you just, you're just laying there helpless. But I'm here to tell you this. There's a new day. Today is 2015. Today is a brand new day. I don't know what's happened in the past. I don't know. I feel like I'm Caleb just coming up to tell you, hey, I've seen the promised land and it's amazing. It's amazing. And, and I've got a little taste of those grapes and I want you all to see how amazing God is. I feel like Dallas and Ernie, some of these other guys that are up here speaking, they, they, they've seen the same thing. Some of you in the crowd have seen that promised land, but you're still waiting to go into it. You're waiting to go into it. So 
The choice is yours, folks. Because here's the deal. God did not forget about those people. But the people that said we don't want to go in, God let them die in the wilderness. And everybody under the age of 20 lived in the desert with their parents. Their parents died off. They ended up going in 40 years later. And they were victorious and they were successful in that land. But guess who else made it? Caleb. He was the oldest guy there and he made it. I don't care how old you are today. It does not matter. You can be in that desert for 40 years and still make it in. You can get life just stepped on you. And you've made every wrong choice that a person can make. But you know what? Today is a new day. It's a new year. And I just pray that every time you get your checkbook out or you look at a calendar and you see right the date, you see that 2015, you would see that today is a new day. It is a new year. There, guys, there's no coincidence that I'm preaching this message on the first day of the year. There's no coincidence we're in this building with all these Egyptian looking weird things on the wall. No coincidence, folks. No coincidence at all. Why? Because God said, I brought this people here today. I've brought you to the promised land today. It is right there. It's your choice. It's your choice to step into that land. Am I a grasshopper? Am I a giant killer? Because what happened, folks? Caleb knew he was a, knew that he was a giant killer. And, and, and a couple verses down, I'm not going to read it, but the Bible actually says, yeah, your name might have been dog, but guess what? You're also a man of a different spirit. You're a man of a different spirit. That's what the name God gave him. Yeah, they might all call you dog. I believe it's Numbers 13, 34. But God said, you know what? You're a man of a different spirit. You're a woman of a different spirit. Why? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in you. I don't care if you were dog. You are a man or a woman of a different spirit. When you go out today, that Holy Spirit is all over you. He's all up on you. And he wants to kill those giants with you. You're not going to be alone. You're not going to face anything alone. The Holy Spirit's with you. And that's what Jesus is. That's who he is. He is a God of love. That he gave himself for you all. And he sent his Holy Spirit. You know the Bible says that, that the disciples said, Jesus, we want you to stay with us. We love you, Jesus. We want you to stay. And Jesus said, if I don't go, you're not going to get the Holy Spirit. Jesus had to go. He had to go to heaven. And he gave him his Holy Spirit. Because those Holy Spirit lit those people up and, 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 and fired those people up. And see, that's the thing. I'm closing. I said that at once. I promise I'm closing right now. I'm closing. I am. I can't keep talking. But I will say one more thing. We don't understand the value of God's love for us. We really don't. I didn't. I, I still don't. I still don't. I'm not going to get up here and say, I understand it. I don't. I get a little, mere, tiny fraction of it. But I do know this, that that God that created this entire place, created every single one of y'all, every situation you're going through, he said, you know what? I want to know what you're going through. I want to feel what you're feeling through. I want to feel the loneliness. I want to know what it feels like to spend Christmas alone. That's what I want. I'm going to come to this earth. And that's what Jesus was. That's what he was. That's what he was. He came in our flesh and he died. He died for us. But more importantly, he died as us. See, that's the thing we don't understand. We just throw it off on Jesus. Jesus died. Jesus died. Jesus died. Yes, he died. But so did you. So did you. Read your Bibles, folks. He tells you right there, Colossians. He died as you. When he died, you died. And guess what? He didn't stay dead. He rose. He rose on the third day. See, folks, you got some problems. You got some stuff going on. Let that stuff die. Let it die. Even if it's still in your face tomorrow morning and staring at you right in the face, Jesus said it's already been taken care of. You might feel the effects. You might feel it pressing on you. But know who you are. Know who you are in me. Because as crazy it is, as Jesus died and as we died with him, guess what? 1 John 4, 17. As he is, so are we where? In this world. So think about that for a second. I know I'm throwing a lot at you and your heads are spinning, but that's okay. I'm going to take it for one more world. As he is, so are we in this world. As he died, we died, right? As he rose... We rose. As he is in this world, so are we. 
Where is he now? He's in heaven with the right hand of Father, with God himself. He's up there feeling good, looking good. His has no, he, had, he, he took care of all of it on the cross. That's where we are, folks. Yes, we're sitting here and you're like, what are you talking about, Drew? I'm sitting here in green Ohio. I'm not in heaven. No, 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 no. But live from that place. Live from that place in here. In here. Be with Jesus in your spirit. He died and so did you. That means he's awesome and so are you. All that nasty guilt, all that stuff that you keep dragging around, that's your old you. It's there, but it's not you. Why? Because when he died, you died. You got it. You guys, it's, it's, it's crazy. It doesn't make sense. That's why it's called faith. You got you to gotta, you gotta think as best you can, and then you get to that point where you can't think anymore, and you let it go, and you know that he has you. When he died, you died. When he rose, you rose. That's why you're a giant killer. That's why you're not a grasshopper. You used to be a grasshopper, but when he died, and you believed that he died for you, you became a giant killer. You became a giant killer. Folks, when you go out today, every day you have a choice. Speak life or speak death. It's your choice. In the book of Joshua, Joshua says himself, he was another spy with Caleb that believed. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So I'm telling you right now as a corporate thing, I know what I'm going to do. I've seen, the, I've seen the land. I've seen the promised land. I'm going back in there. I might have to go back in the desert for a little bit longer, but I know what God has for me. I've tasted it, I've seen it, and I'm going after it. I'm not going to go back to Egypt. I might be in the desert, but I will not go back to Egypt. Folks, are you going back to Egypt or are you going to the promised land? That's your choice. That's your choice every single day. When you're laying in bed tonight, you've got a choice. And guess what? Tomorrow, if you choose Egypt, that's okay, because next Friday, you can choose a promised land. Every day you have a choice, guys. Please hear me. Hear my heart. I see so many people that just get beat up by their problems, by their situations. Time and time and time again. They don't quit. They love the punishment. They're used to the punishment. And it's not your fault what happened to you when you were 15. It's not your fault. It's not your fault what they did to you, what your dad did to you. It's not your fault. Guys, the promised land is there. I know it hurts. I know you still got the scars of Egypt on your body. But God is there with his arms wide open. And he is a God of love. And he is reaching out and saying, son, daughter, let it go. Let it go. I'm here. I'm here running to his arms. Please bow your heads with me. Jesus, I just sit here today, Father. And I'm just so humbled, Lord, to be here, God. Father, I know what it was like to be in Egypt, God. I know it all too well. I know what it's like to be called dog and get stepped on and get rejected and get cut by people, Lord. I know what it feels like, God. But Holy Spirit, I know who you are. I know how good you are, Jesus. I love you so much, God. But more importantly, I know that you love me. So, Father, I pray over every single person in this place that you would give them a deeper revelation of how much that you love them, Father. That you are just dying, dying to spend time with them. That you died for them. That you just, the God of the universe, just wants to spend time with them. So, Father, I just pray right now for every single person, for every heartache, Father God, for every giant that stepped on them yesterday, Lord, that that Holy Spirit within them would rise. Would rise, Father. Oh, God, I just pray that you would awaken the hearts of the people in this place and they would go out and every time they see a calendar and every time they see 2015, they would know that this is the new year. This is the year that they go into the promised land. Father, please awaken their hearts. Please stir their hearts. Lord, I know there's people that are hurting here so much and some of them still feel like they're in Egypt. God, if they're still in Egypt, they're crying out. I pray that you would just send them a deliverer. Send them a deliverer, Lord Jesus. Send them a deliverer, Father. They are crying. They are caught in their addiction and they feel so shamed and guilty and, and just ridden with fear. But Father, they don't know that when you died, they died with them and all that stuff that they were carrying went on the cross, Lord. Father, your love is so great. You're saying, I know what you did yesterday. I know what you did this morning, but I don't care. I love you so much. 
Father, I'm reminded of that woman who was caught in adultery. She was caught in the act, Lord. And they brought him out to Jesus and said, Father, what are you going to do, Jesus? She just got caught having sex with a man who wasn't her husband. We caught her. That's a sin. What are you going to do, God? And the Lord said, you know what? He who doesn't have a sin, she who doesn't have a sin, you throw that stone. Father, none of us are perfect. Lord, I break the spirit of pride in this place that thinks they're better because they read 100 chapters a day and they've been going to church for 55 years and they never miss a Sunday. Lord God, that's amazing that they were able to do that. But there's a lot of us who, who can't do that. Lord, there's a lot of us who are that woman. Yeah, we might not have been caught having sex with somebody else, but God, we're coming to you feeling like that. We feel so dirty sometimes that we don't even deserve to be in your presence. But Father, what did you do to that sweet woman? You wrapped her up in your arms and you said, Daughter, I don't condemn you. I don't condemn you. I don't condemn you. So, Father, I pray that over these people that whatever they're holding right now, Father God, would be broken off of them in Jesus' name. Lord, that spirit of no condemnation, Lord, if they've ever went to a church, if they've ever felt condemned by a pastor, by a priest, by a parent, Father God, I break that no condemnation in Jesus' name, Father God. I break it off of them right now, that chains that's been holding down those addictions, Father, you're telling them today, I love you. I don't care where you've been. I just want to be with you. I want to hold your addiction. I want to hold you. I love you. I've given you the gift of righteousness. You are holy just like me if you could only see what I see. Father, when does that ugly duckling turn into that beautiful swan? The minute that it looks into the lake. The minute it sees that mirror. The minute it sees that reflection. So Father, I so pray that these people would look in the mirror and they would see what you see. They would see how amazing you are. They would see how beautiful you are, God. Because as he is, so are we in this world, Lord. As he is, so am I in this world. That I am righteous, I am holy. I am a giant killer because you are a giant killer. Close, guys, just be quiet for another second and just look at your life. Make that choice in your heart today where you're going to go. Make that choice in your heart if you're going to stay in Egypt, wander in the, wander in the desert, or you're finally going to make it into the promised land. guys in here who don't even know this amazing God I'm talking about. You've heard about him, but you've been running scared like that wounded animal doesn't know that it just wants to be taken care of and loved. For you, God is calling out to you. Jesus is calling out to you saying, son, daughter, I want you. I want you. I want you. I love you. I saw what you went through and I want to rescue you, but you haven't let me. I wanted to bless you, but you've had so much junk in your hands. You haven't let go and to receive what I've received. You've carried your pain and your scars for too long and I want to give you freedom. But I can't give it to you because your hands are so full. Father, for those people, if that's you right now, just... Let go and cry out. Reach hands. Reach your hands up. You, I'm not, you don't have to do it physically. You can if you want, but I'm talking in your spirit, in your heart. Reach out to him and say, God, I want to get picked up like a little baby. When that baby starts crying, if you have children, it starts crying and lifts his hands. What do you do? You immediately put what you're doing and pick that baby up. Folks, that's what God wants to do to you today, right now. He wants to reach down. He wants to pick you up. He wants to cradle your broken heart. He wants to heal you, but you won't stay in his presence long enough to receive what he wants to give you. Guys, that's what he has for you. So if that is you, 
If that's you that, that just needs to reach your arms up to the Lord, just, just I'm going to pray a prayer. You can pray it silently. You can pray it out loud. But he wants you. No, actually, you know what? In fact, um, let's just say this out loud together as a group, as a corporate group. I don't want to embarrass anybody. I don't. Nobody has to raise their hand. If you want me to pray with you personally, come up after the, come up after the service. I'd love to lay hands on you and hug you and just pray for you. I'd love to. But if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to come up, then, that, then the same God that's pouring out of me is the same God that's going to be pouring on you as soon as you get that get that fresh air outside. It's the same same God that's going to be like that red light staring at your face, just just waiting for you, loving on you. So just pray this prayer with me, folks. Jesus, I've been in that wilderness. I've been in that desert. I know what it's like to do things on my own. And it's hard. And it's painful. I'm so tired, God. God, I don't have the strength to get into that promised land. I want to be in there, but I just can't. I can't do it on my own anymore, God. But you can. So, Father, this is me reaching up my hands to you. Saying, I need you. I love you. I want to know you, God. I'm opening myself up to you. I'm inviting you into my life for the first time. Set me free. I believe in you, Jesus. Set me free. And that's it, folks. That's all it is. That's all it is. You make that first step to God. He's going to come running to you. He's going to come running to you. He's going to run to you. I'm getting ready to go back to California. But I want you to know it's been such an honor, such a privilege, telling you guys a message of grace. I love you all so much. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.